Yeah, so uh, then I will want to welcome everyone and especially welcome to you, Brother David. We're so grateful that you are here, that you got up so early for us. <laughs> and um, I have been sharing a little bit about your testimony, what you shared us last time, for those who haven't seen your testimony yet. And um, so uh, let's start with a prayer. Oh, Father in heaven, we're so grateful that we can meet here as a family or family. And this it says that the family in heaven and the family of earth is one family. And we are longing to come home, Jesus. We're longing to be with you forever. And meanwhile, we are down here, you know, that we are going through different struggles, but with the health and mental and physically and and uh, but everything is possible for you to heal. And you're so grateful for all the things you have been teaching us already. And today we are going to learn more things, Lord. We praise you for how you have been leading Brother David. We praise you, Lord, for all the people which you have healed by natural remedies. And I pray that you will continue to bless him and the work he's doing for you. In Jesus' name, amen. So I would like to um, mention um, um, experience you had with a lady who came to your place and she was having a brain tumor and she was having a tumor in both of her breasts. And if I remember right, you said that um, she was healed after five weeks. Um, and one of the things she was you were using was tofu poultice and can you please share a little bit what is a, a tofu poultice doing and what else did you do to get rid of that um, brain tumor um well the particular case you're referring to i'm, I'm trying to identify but I, I think you're actually referring to a case where i actually had to travel to new york and work with the individual but um the tofu poultice it, it it causes the blood to flush away from the tumors. We just use it because it will hold cold longer than ice will. Ice will thaw out, the tofu will stay frozen longer. Um, and so with that and putting the feet in hot water, it draws the blood away from the, uh, from the tumors. Okay, so you put the uh, feet in the hot water at the same time, so as you put the uh, tofu poultice on. So how many hours are you having the tofu poultice on? So the tofu poultice is on for about three to five hours, uh, you know, until it thaws out. And then the feet in the hot water for 10 minutes, just to kind of give it a boost. And, and we'll be explaining that um, when we get into like hydrotherapy and herbal therapy at, at a later lecture. But, um, but just to give you a quick understanding, the goal is blood manipulation. We're, we're trying to draw the blood away from the area where the tumors are so that we can starve them um, and because the blood feeds the tumors, you know, with the nutrients that, that's in the blood. And so in doing that, um, three times a day, you know, we saw great results. And within um, about, yeah, five weeks, well, she was having seizures. And within the first or second day, the seizure stopped. And she was having those every day and was on seizure medication. Um, but she had tumors in her, in both, in five weeks, all the tumors in her breast were gone. Um, and the, the tumors on the brain had had stopped. So, you know, God is good. It's just, you know, when we get rid of these tumors, it's just mopping up the puddle of water off the floor, as you often hear me say. We have to fix the leak in the faucet, which is the cancer itself. So although you might get rid of the tumors within a matter of weeks, you have to stick to the program, doing the fever baths and things every day until the cancer is actually gone. Otherwise, there's going to be more water on the floor. So when you say that it is gone, are you working somehow together with a doctor or, I mean, or is, that she's taking blood tests? Uh, as them? Yes. So in, in a lot of cases, like a breast tumor, you can feel that it's gone because it's, you know, a lot of the people that come with breast tumors, they're pretty huge and you can feel them and see them bulging through the skin. So when they're gone, they're gone. Either we shrink, shrink them and they dissolve. But we pull them naturally, you know, using a poultice that pulls the tumor. And so now we know it's gone because it's in our hand in, in a jar. Um, but other than that, they go back to the doctors and you know, the tumors are either gone or they've shrunk from like a baseball down to a marble and they just have to keep it up, you know, until it's nothing. 
Amen. So you said something very nice. You said uh, in the later program. So that must mean that you're going to be with us for many programs. So uh, we are really looking forward for that. Uh, I wonder, um, I don't know how you want to do this program. Uh, you said that you wanted me to call it Why Are You Sick? So maybe you have a special, um, you know, if you want to go with step by step or Yes, well, it's why are you sick? It's just this morning's lecture. Sorry? Why are you sick? It's the title of this morning's lecture. Right. Um, the next lecture will, will be a different title. So, yes, that, that's just this morning's lecture. Amen. Yeah, so please share with us. All right, all right. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to have another brief word of prayer and then we'll get right into it. All right. Father in heaven, we just thank you for another day of life, another chance and opportunity to be just like you in character. Um, I know it's just 5.30 in the morning where I am. Um, so this day is just beginning for me, but I know it's um, midway and past uh, church hours where everyone else is. Um, so I hope everyone's having a great Sabbath. And I pray that you bless us over here with a special Sabbath blessing throughout the day. And be with us now, Lord, as we discuss your methods of healing. And we pray that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. All right. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. All right. All right. So we are living in a day and age where um, the lifespan of mankind is rapidly decreasing. Um, when you look in the scriptures, we see that Noah and Methuselah, um, they all lived in their 900s. Um, Adam lived to be 930, and uh, Noah lived to be 950, and Methuselah 969. So the lifespan of man was um, far longer than it is today. When you get to the book of Psalms, the Bible says that we're blessed if we see three score and 10 years. Um, but Today, um, you're blessed if you live to see 50. A lot of people are dying in their um, late 30s, early 40s um, from, you know, many different diseases, but two main diseases, and we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Um, but before I get into um, these diseases or the topic of the lecture, I just wanted to, since this is our first time coming together, just give you a little background about myself. So. I, um, <laughs> when I was six years old, I moved to Miami with my mother. I think I explained that in the uh, testimony that I gave you guys the last time we were together. For two and a half years, she taught me the truth, um, Bible and spirit of prophecy. And we were homeschooled and had to memorize scripture. And we understood, you know, the health message. We were vegan by choice. Um, and I moved back to California with my father at about eight and a half, almost nine years old. And um, I began to do music and I was in the music um, industry early. My first album was in stores, I was 13 years old. And so that was my life until I was about 24. At 24, I remembered the truth that my mother taught me and I returned to it. And of course I searched the scriptures to make sure she wasn't making a big mistake. Um, and I found that this um, was definitely the truth. And the health message was also um, something that God had given us as a gift. So I read the book, Ministry of Healing, and I learned so much just reading that book. And I also learned um, from watching a video that you can help people get rid of diabetes naturally. So I started working with people that had diabetes and, you know, by God's grace, we had success. And so I was doing that for a couple of years until I learned of a place in Nebraska that was curing AIDS and cancer. So I went there for what was supposed to be a six month training course and I ended up staying for a year and a half. Um, they cured many cancer patients, five AIDS patients, in fact. Um, I returned to California in 2013 and during, I began to do the work independently. And then about five years ago, we opened our own lifestyle center and I gave you guys the testimony as to how that came about uh, the last time we were together. Um, but we opened our own lifestyle center in the 13 years of me doing this work. I mean, we've seen some of the greatest miracles. We've had people come 
with stage four cancer in the liver, the bones, and the lungs. With three weeks to live, they're on hospice. And just within a matter of three weeks, um, they're off hospice. Cancer markers are normal. Tumors are gone. And they're still alive today, years later. Um, we've had tumors the size of grapefruits di disappeared just within a matter of weeks. Um, at our Lifestyle Center, we have jars of tumors just everywhere um, because we're pulling tumors out left and right. So there's nothing that God can't cure. It's just a matter of us um, being active and doing our part. In agriculture, um, you can say, God, please make these tomatoes grow. And God says, I will once you have planted the seed that I've given you and you water it. And then he gives the increase. So there's a three fold part or a three part action. Um, God does something and then we're required to do something and then he does the final act. So he provides us with the ability to do our part or with something for us to do. Then we do our part and then he blesses our efforts. Amen. All right. So taking that into consideration and just, just kind of giving you a, a little backstory. There's so many testimonies we can go over. I mean, we have about a hundred videos on YouTube um, and then that's not even uh, probably half of all the things we can um, discuss and testimonies that we can give. But nonetheless, when we look at just this nation alone, where I reside, the United States, um, a lot of people are dying in their early 40s, late 30s, and really two main diseases um, are causing a lot of this illness uh, or a lot of this death. Cancer is responsible for one fourth of the death population in this nation alone. I'm not even speaking of the nation where you live and its rate, but just in this nation alone, cancer is responsible for one fourth of the nation's death population each year. And heart disease, according to the CDC, is responsible for one fourth of the nation's death population, just in this nation alone. So that's half the nation's death population due to cancer and heart disease. Half of the people that die every year die to either cancer or heart disease. We're not talking car accident and crime and tragedy. Just these two diseases alone wipe are responsible for half the nation's death population. So the question could be posed, if God sits on the throne of the universe and he really loves his people and cares about his people, then why are so many people sick? You know, wh wh why are so many people sick? And then the question would be, does God care about your health? And the answer, of course, I'm sure we all are familiar with the verse in 3 John verse 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So this means that God has a wish list. It says, beloved, I wish above all things. So he has a wish list. And at the top of that wish list is your physical and spiritual prosperity. He says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. That's your physical prosperity. Even as thy soul prospereth. That's your spiritual prosperity. Amen. So it's definitely God's will for us to be healthy. So then the question would still be posed, if it's God's will for us to be healthy, then why are so many people dying? Are there some diseases that God can't deal with? Are there some things that are just too, too large for him or out of his control? Are there some diseases that he can't cure? No. No, indeed. Amen. Psalms 103, verse 2 and 3. You can turn there or you can write it down in your notes. But Psalms 103, uh, verse 2 and 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Amen. So that word all means everything. It includes every disease from cancer to heart disease to AIDS to diabetes, you name it. There's nothing that God can't cure, including the selfishness in our hearts. Amen. So there's nothing that God can't cure. Um, so here we have a God who wishes above all things that we be in good health and he's able to give us good health. So then why are we sick? Why are we so sick? And while I'm talking to you, I'm actually going to pull up some quotes and maybe we'll uh, work it to where I can actually share my screen with you guys, but we'll see here in just a moment. Why are so many of us sick? Why 
is disease running so rapid in the land if it's God's will for us to be well and if he's able to give us good health? That is the question here. And as that pulls up, we'll kind of just move on. But when you think of a car, um, in order for the car to run, it needs gas. Um, it also needs fluids. It needs um, water or coolant. Um, it needs oil. Without these things, um, you know, complications will occur. Well, for one, if you don't have gas, the car's not going anywhere. Um, for two, if you don't have oil or fluids, eventually the car will overheat and you will blow a head gasket. It's the same with your body. Um, if we don't give it the things it needs, complications are going to occur. And it may be small complications that lead to greater complications. And eventually, um, just like the car, our bodies will give out. Um, so if our bodies are made in a way where we are dependent upon certain things in order to be in perfect health, then it would be hoove us to make sure that we apply these things in our everyday life. Amen. I'm going to take a look at some of these stats really quick as we move on. So this is the American Cancer Society. It says, according to the American Cancer Society in the United States, about 1,620 people were expected to die of cancer each day in 2015. This equates to nearly 590,000 people for the for that year. All right. Um, so that's just the stats on cancer alone. 2019, you had this many cancer cases. Um, it was 590. Uh, thousand in 2015. 2019, you have 1,762,450 cancer cases just in the U.S. alone. 1,750 cancer cases just in the U.S. alone. So you see that the numbers are increasing. What about heart disease? According to the CDC, as we mentioned earlier, it says about 10,000 people die of heart disease in the United States every year. That's one in every four deaths. Or I'm sorry, not 10,000, but 610,000 people die of heart disease in the United States every year. That's one in every four deaths. So again, heart disease is responsible for one fourth of this nation's death population. Um, here's the verse that we just met, 3 John verse two and Psalms 103 verse two and three. But Proverbs 26 verse two says the following, as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Does anybody know what that means? I, I want to invite you to go ahead and unmute your phones as long as you don't have background noise and, and try to give me an understanding as to what that means. What do you think this verse is saying? As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Well, if I may make an attempt um, to share my thoughts on that, it would be that uh, we read that uh, uh, God speaks uh, to the Israelites through Moses and saying, you know, if you do all these things I'm, I'm, I'm telling you to do, then you will prosper and you will have it good. But if you don't do that, you know, then you will be cursed. And uh, he, he applies it in so many ways. And I think, I mean, you know, if we, if we deviate from, from these uh, health uh, principles, uh, then, then, then we will invite the, uh, uh, a, a result, you know, in a way. Okay. So, so what is this verse simply saying in Proverbs twenty six two? I know Deuteronomy twenty eight speaks of the curses, but what is this verse simply saying in Proverbs twenty six, verse two? Well, there, there is a reason why you have a curse. There's a reason why this happens to you. Amen. Just as the bird cannot come to you without wandering, just as the swallow cannot come to you without flying. Neither can a curse of any kind, including disease, come to you without a cause. Amen. So for every curse under the sun, including disease, there is always a cause. Amen. And so the question would be, what is the cause of disease? And I'm taking this out of the book of Councils on Diets and Food, page 21, paragraph two. It says sickness is caused by violating the what? Anyone there with me? Yes. 
the laws of health. And I'll invite you, go ahead and unmute your phones. If anyone has background noise, we'll let you know. Um, because I, I want you to be interactive and know that this is actually penetrating through your minds and that it's resonating with you. But sickness is caused by violating the laws of health. It is the result of violating nature's law. Our first duty, one which we owe to God, to ourselves, and to our fellow men, is to obey the laws of God, which include the what? The laws of health. The laws of health. Amen. So here's the thing. What do we mean when we say the laws of health? As I was just mentioning, just as, you know, a car needs gas in order to go and it needs, um, you know, fluids, um, so does our body. If we don't have gas, you won't be able to go. If your body doesn't have energy or fuel, it, you won't be able to go. And if you don't have fluid, the car will overheat and blow a head gasket, just as we will if we don't drink enough water and do the things that we need to do. But the question is, friends, and looking here, when the car isn't taken care of, it goes to a junkyard. And when you don't take care of your body, you prematurely go to the graveyard. Amen. But the thing is, our bodies are built in a way where we need air in order to survive, right? You go just minutes without oxygen and what happens to you? You die. You die, amen? Okay. Um, we need sleep. We need um, all of these different things. And just using air as an example, it doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, young, old, male, or female, if you deprive yourself of oxygen within minutes, you will die. Therefore, it is a rule and a law that if you want to live, you have to have oxygen. Amen? Amen. Yes? Okay. Who is it that created the human body? The Lord. God. So whose decision was it to make us in a way where we need air or we need oxygen? The Lord. Amen. So it was him who placed this law, set this law in place that governs our being. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore, this, these laws that govern our being, these natural laws that govern our being aren't just any laws, but they are God's laws. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you call it if you violate God's law? It's sin. It's sin. And according to the scriptures, what is the wages of sin? Death. Amen. The Bible says here in 1 John 3, 4, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And Romans 6, verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. So anytime we violate God's law, the wages or the penalty or the result is always going to be death. Amen. If we deprive ourselves of oxygen, yes, we see death as the penalty or the result within minutes. But what about if you deprive yourself of exercise? If I don't go walking just today alone, am I going to drop dead? You'll lose what you don't use. Okay, you'll use what you don't lose. So if I don't walk today, am I, am I going to die? Well, I don't think you die so quickly if you don't exercise, but uh, it uh, it makes you, you know, after a while you will get some kind of disease. Well, no, not, not after a while, just today alone, just within this 24-hour period. If I don't walk, am I going to die today? Not today. No, no not at all, amen. Um, but you want to know what will die immediately? Perfect circulation. Right. If I if I don't exercise today, just today alone, perfect circulation will die just for today. Amen. I can go exercise tomorrow and improve my circulation. But today, if I don't get exercise, I won't have per perfect circulation. If I don't drink enough water, I won't have perfect circulation. And because perfect circulation, according to the pen of inspiration, depends upon perfect health. Anything that hinders perfect circulation hinders perfect health. Amen. So. If I neglect to exercise today, not only does my perfect circulation die, but my perfect distribution of nutrition dies because in order for the, the nutrition to be distributed properly, the blood has to circulate properly, amen? Amen. And not only, not only does my perfect distribution of nutrition die, my 
um, willpower to get up and do that which I need to do for my body begins to die. Amen. Because although one act does not determine, it, it does not determine the character, um, it breaks down the barrier and the next temptation is more readily entertained. Does that make, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We are creatures of habit. Um, actions repeated form habits and habits form character, inspiration tells us. Amen. So if you neglect to exercise today, it makes it easier to neglect to exercise tomorrow. Amen. So therefore, you start to kill your willpower and your and, and the discipline that you have to make sure that you do what you need to do on a daily basis to provide your body with all it needs. Amen. Amen. So my point is that when the Bible says the wages of sin is death, I want you to know that that is immediate death. It's, there's always immediate death. And then there's always long term death, long term death. Does that make sense? OK, when, when you go to the Garden of Eden, God said in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. Did they die that day within those 24 hours that they die and cease to live? No, they didn't die that day. No, they didn't. They didn't die completely that day. But what did die that day was their ability to be selfless or, or, or their selflessness died that day. Uh, the inability for disease to enter into the world died that day. Um, their perfect love died that day. Amen. The the obliviousness that they had to to evil died that day. The inability for animals to attack each other and eat each other died that day. Are, are you following me? Mm -hmm. So yep. immediate death took place right away. And the reason why I'm stressing this is because. Yes, we know for a fact that if we deprive ourselves of oxygen, we will die within minutes. That's why having air is, is a big deal in the schools, in the, in the workplace. By law, they have to make sure that there's proper ventilation in all the buildings. Amen? Amen. Because they can see the immediate result if, if not enough oxygen is flowing, you know, flowing through the building. If the same um, action were taken for every other law of health, there would be no disease. Amen. But because, you know, the Bible says, because judgment is not executed speedily, what happens? Well, continue to do it. Amen. The, the wickedness of man, it increases and grows, it grows rapidly. Amen. So because you don't drop dead if you don't walk, because you don't drop dead right away if you don't drink water, it's easy for us to neglect these things. Amen. Right. But when you, when you understand and when you can take a look into the human body and you can see what's happening, how the blood becomes sluggish for that day, and because the blood is sluggish, all that needs to take place doesn't take place because the circulation is hindered or perfect circulation has died. Then it begins to you begin to have a different point of view on the importance of exercising every day, of drinking water every day, of doing the different things that are necessary, amen? And these are just small examples stressing the importance, amen? Um, so here's the thing. We violate the laws of health. Now sickness comes upon us. And what is, what is it that most of us do right away? Oh, uh, go to the doctor. We go to the doctor. And what does the doctor do for us? Oh, he poisoned us with drugs. Okay. Now, um, can the doctors do anything for you? Well, he's not educated in that way. Okay. But the doctors can definitely do something for you. If you break a leg, please, by all means, go to the doctor and let them place it. Amen? If right. a doctor tells you that you need to eat a better diet, you need to exercise more, drink water, that's a good doctor. But the moment the doctors prescribe medication, then you might want to start running. Here's why. The body has placed in it, God placed in the human body, what is called an immune system. Amen? We're all familiar with the immune system. What is the immune system's job? Can you please repeat the question? God placed in our bodies what's called an immune system. What mm -hmm. is the immune system's job? To fight, off, to fight off disease, amen? Let me ask you a question. 
when was the immune system placed in the human body? Before or after disease came into the world? Before. Before. So this means that God thought of your disease long before it existed. Amen? Yeah. All right. The cancer-fighting agents that are in chaparral, that are in graviola, in poke root, and we'll be discussing these herbs at another time, they were placed there before cancer ever existed. Amen? So God had the answer for cancer and for every other disease before disease ever had a place in this world. Amen? Amen. Just so like when disease, disease was already in place before sin occurred. Wonderful. Say it again, brother. Just like the plan of redemption was already in place before. Just like the plan, amen. Amen. Just like the plan of salvation, Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. Just like the plan of salvation was already set in place before we were ever created, um, or before sin ever came into this world, so was the immune system placed in, in our bodies before disease ever had an entrance into this world. Amen. And so when disease comes on the scene and we say, God, God, there's disease. God says, oh, don't worry. I knew disease was going to come before I even created you. So when I created you, I put an immune system in your body. Your job is to make sure the immune system is at its best. If you do that, it will fight off disease. Amen. Oh, God, God, cancer's coming. Cancer's coming. Okay, that's fine. Before cancer ever came, I put these herbs on earth that have cancer fighting uh, properties inside of them. Utilize these herbs along with everything else and you'll see results. Amen. Keep the immune system in tip top shape and it will do its job. Amen? Amen. But when you take medications, what do medications do to the immune system? Makes it worse. You get more problems in addition. It suppresses the immune system. It breaks down the immune system. Amen. So here's the problem, friends. If God, who knows all things, he's wise. Amen. If he says your immune system is what I've given you to fight off disease. And then man comes along and says, hey, we have something also that fights off disease, but it will also tear down your immune system. Then can these medications be from God? Mm -mm. God will not give you something. God would not make something as the solution and then turn around and make something else that destroys his solution. Amen? Amen. The Bible says Satan cannot cast out Satan. Well, neither can God cast out God. Satan doesn't work against his own kingdom. Neither does God work against his own. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. In fact, notice what the Bible says here. Acts. Chapter 15, looking at verse 18. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. The work that he did when he put the, the, the cyanide in apricot seeds. And the work that he did when he created your good cells in a way where they produce what's called uh, phosphatase which would deactivate cyanide so that the good cells are not attacked and only cancerous cells are attacked. This was him at work making a solution to cancer long before cancer existed, amen? The job that your body does, that the immune system does in fighting off virus and fighting off disease, this is a work that God did long before disease existed because he knew the work he would have to do against disease from the beginning of the world. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Amen? All right. Notice what the Bible says. Turn with me. Open your Bibles. I hope you have your Bibles with you. Turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 16. And we're going to begin at verse 12. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, beginning at verse 12. And when you're there, amen. 2 Chronicles 16, beginning at verse 12. Just giving a little bit more time for everyone to get there. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, beginning at verse 12. Um, the Bible says, And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease, he sought not to the Lord, but to who? To the physician. 
to the physicians. Notice what it says in the next verse. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in what year? The one and 40th year of his reign. Did you catch that? What year of Asa's reign did he catch the disease? 39. Took him two years to die. Yes, the 39th year he catches the disease, the 41st year he dies. So within two years he dies from this disease. And what did the Bible take time to let us know? That he sought not to the Lord, but to who? Are we okay. there? The physician. The physicians, amen. The Bible took time to let us know that he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians, because Asa was a righteous man. So when you hear of Asa dying of disease, you would say, well, how come God didn't heal him? So if the, if the Bible wanted to let us know, God wanted to let us know that although he was righteous in his disease, he didn't seek God, he sought the physicians, amen? And God has to let everything run its course. Um, what about the woman with the issue of blood? We know the Bible says that she went to the physicians. She spent all the money she had. But she went to them for 12 years and didn't get better, but she rather grew worse. Amen? Amen. So if the, if the physicians and their medications could do nothing for Asa and could do nothing for the woman with the issue of blood, what do you suspect it's going to do for us today? That's right. Notice what it says. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. The thing that hath been is that past, present, and future. There is nothing new in the rest. Okay. Is everyone God here is the looking question? for a people that will put 100% faith in him and him alone when they are fearful and when they are full of pain, he is looking to develop that relationship with man. And so we are not to put our faith in a physician. Amen. Amen. But the question was, it says the thing that has been is has been. Is that past, present or future? Past. Past. Amen. It is that which shall be shall be. Is that past, present or future? Future. Future. Okay. And that which is done is that past, present, or future? Present. That's present. Amen. Is that which shall be done? Future. And there is no new thing under the sun. Amen. amen. So if we apply that to the story of Asa and the story of the woman with the issue of blood, if the if the woman, if the medications, the physicians and their medications couldn't do anything then, they weren't able to do anything for the woman with the issue of blood. And they won't they won't do anything for us today, amen? amen. And just as you had people in Asa's day and in the woman with the issue of blood's day seeking the physicians and not getting any remedy and spending all their money and, and getting worse, so you have it today because there's no new thing under the sun, amen. Uh -huh. All right, what's the difference between Asa and the woman with the issue of blood? The woman went to Jesus, the man went to a physician. Amen. The woman eventually went to Jesus and grabbed hold of his garment. Amen. We have mm -hmm. to go to Christ and grab hold of his garment. Do you know why it was so easy for Jesus to heal people just with touch in his day? Or, or why, why he, in a lot of cases, didn't use natural remedies? Because if you realize the, the people in, in Christ's day, a lot of them kept the laws of health already to, to, a, to a great extent. I mean, just think about it. They had no cars. They walked every, everywhere they went. Amen? Mm -hmm. They had the best fresh air. Their air then was far better than ours today. They didn't have all of the processed food. So, so they kept the laws of health. So Christ could come along because they may have done some things. You know, um, It could be said. It could be some some vices that they were holding on to that brought illness upon them. Christ could come along and just touch them with healing and that would be enabling them. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because they're already keeping the laws of health. Today, if he just touched everybody with healing, he would be enabling them because 
anytime you go downhill, God has to let you walk back up the hill so that you can feel the journey. Amen. Amen. So that when you when you go back up this hill, it will give you more reason to never go back down again. Amen. He'll <laughs> walk with you. He'll walk with you. But the reason why he doesn't just touch you and make disease just go away overnight is because there's so many things he has to teach you about what you're doing wrong. Otherwise, you'll be right back in the same predicament. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Our people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. So we don't really seek the knowledge until we need the knowledge, unfortunately. Amen. Amen. It's far better, it's far better to seek the knowledge and obtain it before a crisis comes. But when we're in a crisis and we're in pain, then all of a sudden we seek and we seek high and low for a remedy. We ask we, physician, we call medical missionaries, we call David Cook, we, we pray, we ask God. Right, we start trying to read the spirit of prophecy. God has to let disease run its course so that it will bring us to this point so that we can seek him and his wisdom. Unless we find him and his wisdom and we apply it, then we could we could have results. Amen. 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 And so today, Amen. what we're saying is the cause of all disease is a violation of God's law, whether moral or natural. Amen. Amen. So in order to get rid of disease, we have to first ascertain the cause, correct the violation, and watch the glory of God as nature takes its course. Hmm. And in, to, in order to do that, we have to keep the laws of health. But how can we keep the laws of health if we don't know the laws of health? Amen? Amen. So here's a, here's a question. How many laws of health are there? Eight natural remedies. Okay. Well, I, 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 would, I would like to say one law, but it has eight paragraphs. <laughs> say it again. What, what, did, it, the what did you say, Jan? I said I, I perceive it that it is one law, but it has eight paragraphs because you can't, you can't make one of them void because then you break the whole law. It's one law. Amen. Amen. But I mean, it is referred to as the laws with the S of health. But I asked that question because among us people, we tend to think that there are eight laws of health. And that false idea comes from the fact that there is a quote in the book Ministry of Healing that mentions eight health laws, but it doesn't refer to them as the eight laws of health. It just says these are the laws of health. But there are other quotes that mention other health laws. So if you if you read the Bible, um, when the rich young ruler came to Jesus, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, keep the commandments and live. The rich young ruler said, which ones? Jesus said, honor thy father and thy mother. Don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery. He only mentioned six commandments. Amen. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, say it again. That is interesting. Go on, go on, please. Are there only six commandments? No, no. So he only mentions six commandments, but that doesn't mean that the that God's commandments are limited to those six. Amen. So when we read the pen of inspiration in its entirety, we see that inspiration says the, the clothes we wear are, are is a law of health. She says dress is a law of health. Uh, the Bible says pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. The words we speak are a law of health. Pleasant words is a law of health. Amen. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so was he. Inspiration says many, nine out of 10 people would be well if they only thought so. So what we think is a law of health. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 58 says, when we go and we help the poor, we feed the, the, the hungry, we clothe the naked, we bring the homeless into our house. Then shall our health spring forth speedily. Helping others is a law of health. Amen. Amen. Okay, inspiration tells us cleanliness is a law of health. Work is a law of health. Did you know that you cannot be healthy without work? You cannot, not only can you not be healthy without work, you cannot be happy without work. Did you know that? Work six days and rest one is the Amen. commandment of God. Amen. Amen. When you read the first chapter of the book, Education, we're told. 
that God placed Adam in the garden because he knew that man cannot be happy without work. Amen. So work because a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Amen. Mm -hmm. But a broken spirit does what? Draws the, I don't remember how to say it in English. Draws the something out of the soul. A broken, a broken spirit drieth the bones. Amen. Right. right. And, and let me ask you a question. What type of people have dry bones? I was thinking about the people in love the care. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if that's what you are thinking about, but no, no. What type of okay, think of think of the 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 book of Ezekiel. God said, prophesy unto these dry bones. Can these dry bones live? What what state was were the dry bones in? Death. Dead, amen. So what type of people have dry bones? Dead. Dead people. So when the Bible says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bones. What it's telling us is a broken, depressed spirit will kill you. Amen? Mm -hmm. A lot of disease, especially cancer, is caused by stress. Although animal products is the number one cause of cancer, stress is a big cause of disease. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yes. And stress comes from a lack of faith. or Stress comes from worry. Worry comes from a lack of faith. And a, and a lack of faith comes from a lack of studying God's word because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen? Yes. So there are more than eight laws of health. There's at least 14 laws of health that we find in the pen of inspiration and in the Bible. Um, so we're going to be discussing these over the course of our meetings together. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to learn how to get rid of cancer, how to get rid of diabetes, how to get rid of heart disease, how to get rid of AIDS. We've had great success with AIDS, amen? How to get rid of AIDS, HIV, lupus, Lyme's, all of these different <laughs> diseases, fibroids. We're just within a matter of weeks, we had a lady come. She was scheduled to have um, surgery done the following month. We, she came to the Lifestyle Center for what was supposed to be a 21-day session. We hold 21-day sessions here at our Lifestyle Center. So she was supposed to be here for three weeks. Within two weeks, the fibroid was almost gone. So rather than stay the full three weeks, she was able to just return to work one week early and never had to do the surgery. Um, but the point is, there's nothing God can heal. So our goal is uh, over the course of our meetings together that we will discuss how to get rid of these different diseases um, by God's grace. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. Are there any questions before we close? What do you mean close? I, well, I finish now. Say it again. Is, is that the end of your presentation? Yes, yes, yes. This is just the introduction to everything that we're going to be going over over the course of our meetings. Okay, I'm so sorry you need to hear that, but I do have a, a question. Um, because you have you have your telephone number on your YouTube for videos and so on. So I tried to connect a sister from uh, the United States uh, and she tried to call you, but there, there was never anyone to pick up the phone. And she was suffering from a kind of cervical cancer for, for a couple of years now. And she's very, uh, I mean, she had, she had uh, the, the doctors have given her up and so on, you know, so I said, hey, you need to get in touch with her, you know, but, but she, she never, uh, as long as I understand, she could never, there was never anybody picking up the phone. Yes, but see, the thing is, you have to leave a message. We're so busy. We, we, we will always get back to your messages. So if, if she never left a message, and that's why nobody ever called her back, we never knew she called. So she has to leave a voicemail. If she left a voicemail, then we called her back. And, okay. and let, let me let you know that if you leave a voicemail, but you're in another country and you don't leave the proper code, I won't know how to get a hold of you. I, many times people call from another country and I dial the number that they leave on the, on the voicemail, <laughs> but I learned that they're not giving the proper code. They're just giving the phone number, you know, without the code. I, I, I might have done it in the first time after your first presentation. I, I was trying to call, but it, never mind. <laughs> uh, you okay. know, can I tell you 
can I just say, can I just give you uh, her email address and then it's like like she was like uh, leaving her message to you because that is what just means anyway. Yeah, is she in the states? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Just I'll give you the the mail. Uh, yeah. Have her call the office and leave a voicemail and I'll call her back. Okay. 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 Yeah. So we we have a system. They we get calls in in, in all day. And we we uh re we check the messages at a certain time every day, and we start returning calls in you know in the order they were received. Um, okay, yeah, just just have her leave a voicemail, and we'll we'll definitely get back with it. Thank you so much. You're also, welcome, David. I yes. have. Uh, can I mention something quickly? Yes. Um, another good analogy. I like the analogy of the car. Uh, uh, but there's also another analogy that a man that was uh, inflicted with um, a melanoma, he, I met him randomly in a grocery store and uh, we got into a conversation and I said, I don't really understand uh, how you healed from melanoma. And he said, let me explain it this way. Do you have a hot tub? I said, no, I don't have a hot tub. He says, if you did have a hot tub and you did not take care of the water in your hot tub, what would happen to the water? I said, fungus, mold, bacteria, disease. He said, exactly. He said, you are over 70% water. Why don't you take care of the water in your body like you would the water in a hot tub or a swimming pool. And that Amen. is when the lights really turned on for me decades ago when he had that conversation with me. It was just so profound to relate the water in our bodies to the water in a hot tub. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, are there any other questions? Yeah, I would like to, if you can talk a little bit more about when Jesus just touched the persons and then they were healed. Uh, I know that uh, Sister White says, you know, uh, that uh, in many cases they were sick because a life in a long life in sin. And uh, so, yeah, they had fresh air and they had very natural food and not all the additives and they probably went to bed early. So would you say that most of their problems were mentally? Um, most of their problems were, you know, a violation of moral sin. In fact, if you go to John chapter nine, the disciples ask Jesus when referring to the blind man, it says, this man was blind from birth. Who sinned, him or his parents? because they understood that sin was the cause of disease. Now, Jesus had to enlighten them and say, well, in this man's case, neither sin, but this came upon him so that glory can be brought to God, amen? But it, it, in most cases, when we have disease, it isn't so that glory can be brought to God, it's because we brought it on ourselves, amen? <laughs> um, so not everybody's having a Job experience. When you're going through a trial, you know, a lot of times it's a trial we bring on ourselves. When you're walking with God and you're doing everything he says and then trials come upon you, then you can call that a Job experience. Amen. Right. Uh, but a lot of their violations were moral, you know, more moral um, sin because they kept uh, to a great deal. A lot of the laws of health. But I mean, you still you still had drunkenness and you still had overeating and things of that sort in their day. Right. Yeah, well, I'm looking very much forward for the next program with us, where you're going to, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe you can uh, just share with us what is the next topic? The next topic is, uh, you are what you eat, the importance of nutrition. Um, we're going to go over uh, quite a bit in that lecture, not just the foods we should eat, but how they should be eaten, because that's, that's even more important. Right. Okay. And then, thank you so much. Yeah, it was a really... Um, inspiring and uh, you are not God has not only made you a healer but also a preacher <laughs> right very encouraging and uh, so it is of the Holy Spirit and we ask the Holy Spirit to fill us and teach us and uh, so the Lord is good so uh, maybe Regina can I ask you to have the closing prayer please uh, sure dear Heavenly Father 
We come before you in the name of your only begotten son, Christ Jesus, who is the only mediator between you and man. And we just praise and thank you for bringing us David Cook into our life. He's such a mighty messenger and servant of yours. And we just praise and thank you for bringing him into our life and having him instruct us and teach us of your mighty ways. And we pray that you be with all of us this blessed Sabbath rest day, the day that you provide for our rejuvenation of our complete mind, body, and soul. And we just praise you for your love and care that you would provide us this Sabbath rest day. And we pray all these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>